Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite, and in today's video, I'm going to give you some commentary on T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men. But before I get into that, please do like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. And if you're looking for more resources to help you navigate your way through your HSC English studies, check out our website at Ignite HSC. But for now, let's get into today's video. So in today's clip, I'm going to give you a very quick summary of what occurs in T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men, and I've tried to simplify it to the extent that if you're really not understanding at all what's going on in this, what can be quite a complex poem, it'll make it quite digestible for you at its largest level. I'll take you through some key elements of form and language techniques that I feel are characteristic of Eliot's writing in this particular poem, and flag some key themes within the poem as well. So if you are writing an essay on Hollow Men, and the entire essay is based on it, you'll have a few different ideas to play around with on which to base your paragraphs and the kinds of bits of evidence that would be useful to analyse and how to analyse them. But if you're looking at an essay on Eliot more broadly and you're wanting to write a paragraph using this particular poem, I'll also give you enough depth to dig into the poem within one body paragraph as well. So I've made it applicable regardless of where you are as a student and what kind of writing you're doing on T.S. Eliot. Now, in terms of what's happening in this poem, I think the simplest way to frame Hollow Men and in relation to the title of the poem itself is simply that the poem is tracing a collective form of spiritual yearning. We see this sense of individuals who are looking for a sense of meaning and direction in their existence and it's really dramatised by the consistent use of paradox throughout the poem. And I think at its simplest level, that's the best way of understanding it. The poem is exploring an individual and a collective sense of search for meaning, particularly garnered through a lack of spiritual fulfillment, a spiritual void within the poem. Now, the poem does use continued intertextual allusion to Dante's Inferno, and it does trace in each of the different parts of the poem an individual's movement through the depths of purgatory and towards hell. And you can bring that into your analysis if you want to, but I don't know that it's necessary to actually get to the heart of what the poem is exploring. I think it's a fantastic poem to contrast to Journey of the Magi, and I think the fact that this one was written just before, and they're both quite towards the end of the tenure of Eliot's writing of poetry. It sits in opposition because you see in this poem the sense of lack of fulfillment in terms of spiritual direction, and that spiritual direction is in some ways garnered and satisfied in Journey of the Magi, in my opinion, but nevertheless does not satisfy notions of alienation in Magi. So there is this sense of connection in terms of collective yearning in Hollow Men, and that yearning is to an extent satisfied in Journey of the Magi. However, we do see the individual sense of returning to an inescapable sense of alienation once they have had that spiritual renewal in Magi. So that's a nice little opposition. Another little bit of advice, I think that in your Eliot essays for module B, you do want to have that nice progression in each of your paragraphs. I often advise my students in paragraph one to explore an element of Eliot's external landscape, so perhaps the decay, the decay of the urban landscape, the debris of the decaying modern world. Paragraph two, an internalisation of that external world, how it affects the psyche of the modernist man, and a sense of spiritual disillusionment would feature quite nicely in that second paragraph. So hollow men would work well in the middle of your essay. And I think a poem like Journey of the Magi, exploring whether there is possibility of hope or spiritual renewal to transcend the complexities of Eliot's world could be nice at the end of your essay. So have a think about progression when you're writing your essays on Eliot. You want there to be a nice logical flow through the ideas that you're presenting. And I've just flagged some suggestions for that there. So yes, it is the collective yearning for spiritual fulfillment. And to reiterate that, I just wanted to show you the opening, right? Um, it says here, we are the hollow men, we are the stuffed men, leaning together, headpiece filled with straw, alas. And I think the anaphora of we are reinforces the collective yearning for that spiritual fulfillment. And I think that the direct paradox between hollow and stuffed evokes the sense that during Eliot's time, individuals didn't necessarily digress from religion altogether. When you look at statistics from Eliot's time, people didn't decline from attending church. 
However, there was undoubtedly the rise of existential thought and philosophy, particularly in France, and Eliot was quite versed with the thoughts and ideologies of Nietzsche, who famously quoted, right, God is dead, and Camus, who was very interested in the individual determining their direction in life as opposed to a supernatural predestined force that is governed by God. So I think that the contrast between hollow and stuffed, it speaks to this sense of having a hollowness, a voidness in terms of spiritual direction, but still feeling inadequately stuffed by typified conservative and orthodox religiosity. So it frames for me quite nicely the paradox between still relying on traditional Christianity or religion during that time, but feeling stuffed in the sense that it doesn't satisfy, it merely feels one like the symbolic substance of straw being fulfilled with something which holds no value. So I think the poem is nicely evoking the spiritual complexity, the nuance of it during Eliot's time. And I wouldn't want you in your essays to merely say that individuals digress or reject traditional Christian ideology. It's more about their questioning in light of existential thought of a need for a greater sense of spiritual direction and fulfillment. Okay, so we've got the anaphora, the paradox, and the symbolism of a headpiece filled with straw. And the straw is, of course, a motif throughout the poetry which frames the individuals as being stuffed with an inadequate source. We have, as I mentioned, in terms of form and techniques, intertextual illusion. There are multiple references to Dante's Inferno throughout the poem, and that serves to frame the descent of the soul into hell. And perhaps that is illustrative of the individual's lost hope in moving towards God or indeed questioning the conservative values of religion during this time and whether it satisfies the individual. Knowing, of course, that Hollow Man is written well into the 1920s, right? So it's post-World War I. And against the rhetoric of Nietzsche's God and Dead and the amount of death that occurred in war, people were certainly questioning that if there is really a God and if religion does offer hope, how could the atrocities that have unfolded during this time manifested in the way that they did. So I think if you're thinking about the descent into hell, questioning religion, tie it back to the elements of context that really feature in Eliot's world. And we have other clips, by the way, on context specifically relating to this, if you want to look into them. But this nicely all ties together the integrity of Eliot's work as he relates to the context in which he's writing. Use of paradox, as we've mentioned, the constant antithesis between being hollow and stuffed, and the motifs throughout the poem of that sense of voidness within the individual related to the superficiality of straw as that which cannot satisfy the individual's yearning. In terms of themes in the poem, you can consider elements of spiritual crisis, that sense of existentialism in not being fulfilled by traditional forms of religion. We also have the value of mortality, death as inescapable and how the individual attempts to reconcile that. And of course, the futility in existence. If we are hollow, if we don't have that spiritual fulfillment, what is the purpose to modern life and existence? So guys, I hope you're feeling a bit more confident with what's happening in Hollow Men, what to make of the intertextual illusions, what the key themes are, and how you can, of course, relate this poem to Eliot's context and perhaps contrast it to Journey of the Magi. And I've given you some ideas to talk with in terms of structuring an Elliot essay more broadly. If you have any questions, please do place them below. And indeed, if you're wanting more resources to help you navigate your way through HSC English, check out our website at Ignite HSC. We have lots of analysis on there on context, form, critical interpretations to enhance your Module B studies. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Do like and subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and that way I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.